thank you very much for that. Well, I think it's a strange and challenging time in education, and we urgently need new ideas. It feels as though policymaking has somewhat run out of steam on system change, and we're now left with our checkered landscape, aren't we, of local authorities, regional schools, commissioners, MATS, and Ofsted making up this very complex middle tier of organisations. And while many will be glad that system change doesn't seem to be being mandated at the same frenetic rate that it was, the present apparent lack of alternative policy vision for system-wide improvement can feel disorienting. Meanwhile, of course, the evidence that it's the quality of teaching that makes most difference to young people's attainment, especially for our most disadvantaged pupils, continues to build. But at a time of teacher shortage, the raising of quality in that area is particularly challenging, and that's something that many of you will be facing as you try to fill gaps, recruitment gaps in your schools. So we need new ideas, and especially we need to develop the science of teaching and learning. Understanding how we learn is at least as important as defining what we should learn. And to do that, of course, we need to understand the underlying mechanisms of learning, as well as the behaviours, factors and contexts in which learning flourishes, or indeed the things that impede and inhibit learning. So I'm really delighted to open this genuinely unique event. And it reflects, of course, a visionary partnership between learning, Learners and ASCOL, of which I'll come back to in a sec. It also brings together experts from a range of disciplines to consider how findings from educational neuroscience impact and potentially reshape teaching and learning. Now, as director of, education, of, of the Institute of Education, um, I'm really privileged to lead, to lead the, the leading centre for research in education in the UK, and indeed internationally. And that's according to the QS rankings. That's not just me saying it. Um, but I suppose it's important then that I'm really um, directly supportive of this agenda that today's event speaks to and keen that the science of learning is even further foregrounded in our work at the IOE. Indeed, to some extent, I'm aware that the education discipline across the board is playing catch-up in fully understanding and harnessing developments in neuroscience, genetics, and epigenetics, which I think it's fair to say has sometimes left an unfortunate vacuum to be filled by sensationalist, ill-founded, but eye-catching enterprises, you know, such as the quest to identify the gene for intelligence and so on. One IOE initiative in collaboration with Birkbeck, which is at really at the forefront of serious and innovative work in this field, is the Centre for Educational Neuroscience. Um, and you've already been addressed by Professor Tolmy, who's, who's at the fore of this, and you'll hear from Professor Michael Thomas later, who's the director of that centre. And that's built a new scientific community in this new discipline of educational neuroscience. It brings together colleagues in neuroscience, child development, psychology, and education, with particular expertise, actually, in the fields of emotional, conceptual, attentional, language, and mathematical development, as well as specialists in education and learning research. And that centre is committed to translating research into practice. It's also been unique in its provision of master's training that covers both neuroscience and the psychology of education and in supporting doctoral training, so really supporting capacity building in this field. And the 2013 textbook, Educational Neuroscience, authored by colleagues from the centre, is a key reference point for students, educators, and policymakers interested in bridging that gap 
between the biological basis of learning and the delivery of education in the classroom. So that interdisciplinary work shares the important stance taken by Learners and ASCOL, which is reflected in the design of this conference. A commitment to an integrated, multidisciplinary approach. And an equally important commitment that, again, we share with ASCOL and Learners is, again, reflected in the content of today's event. It's evidence-based practice. ASCOL's involvement, of course, ensures this vital element of practitioner engagement and, and translation and interaction of different knowledges. Of course, new understandings in research need to find their way into practice and policy making. But as I am also very uh, aware as a long time researcher in schools, it's one thing to be coming up with research findings. It's quite another to translate them into the challenging and multifaceted life of classrooms with the very many different challenges and agendas that in the daily life of teachers and school leaders, the, the different things that you're having to balance both in your practice and in the general shape of the school. And of course, today's ad event addresses these challenges by firstly identifying opportunities and challenges offered by the findings from research in this field of educational neuroscience. Secondly, providing examples in which research evidence is being used to inform educational practices. And thirdly, proposing ways in which the findings of educational neuroscience research can be used more effectively to inform policy and practice and improve teaching and learning. And that point about effectiveness is absolutely key, as I say, and where actually, you know, the partnership between practitioners and researchers is absolutely central. And a really important output, I think, of the event will be this report that Derek mentioned already, with recommendations generated through both the presentations but also your feedback to those presentations. And that report will take us beyond you know, this simple call that, in a way, I am making about the need for evidence-based practice to take us to that next step about identifying gaps in the existing field and identifying opportunities and places where things are working so that we can think about what we know already to make teaching and learning better. And what could be more stimulating than that? So congratulations to Askell and Learners for this partnership and for creating such a pioneering event. It feels like a really important step in a developing conversation, and I look very forward very much to reading the report, and I wish you a very exciting day. Thank you. Thank you.